Hey guys, Buffer Gaming Bad today, bringing out a video for our Blueprint Weapon Series. And today we're going to be covering the A94 Blueprint available at Tier 100 of the Season 5 Battle Pass, the Company's Might. So I'll show you how you unlock this. We'll go through the attachments and then jump into some gameplay. And we'll also compare it to the base A94 and see what the major differences are, if any. So let's go ahead and jump out and we'll get right into it. So here you can see the final AN-94, the company's might blueprint, which you get when completing the battle pass at tier 100 for season 5. And you can see here just the attachments and some of the differences cosmetically that we can see on the weapon. So first off, let's go ahead and back out and we'll go to our custom class where we have all this kitted up and ready to go. So we'll look at our custom loadouts here and we'll go to the AN-94. And first off, we'll just strip this down to base using the company's might blueprint. And first off, for the muzzle, we're going to want the compensator. So we'll go ahead and select the... Compensator that's going to assist us with the recoil control, the cons here being the ADS speed and the aiming stability, so we'll select that. Now the barrel for this blueprint comes with the longest barrel available for the AN-94, being the AN-94 Factory X 338mm barrel. So the pros for this, damage range, bullet velocity, as well as the recoil control on this weapon. The cons here being the ADS speed and the movement speed for this barrel. And again, this is the longest barrel you can see there, it indicates it is an experimental barrel, indicated by the X on the naming of the barrel so we'll go ahead and select that now for laser we're going to want the tack laser on this this is just going to assist with the aiming stability ads speed and the aim walking steadiness the cons here laser is visible to enemies when you're adsing only so just be careful about where and when you're adsing so that laser doesn't give away your position you'll see here cosmetic differences versus the base tack laser we get that pec 15 tack laser here on the side which is that tan color versus the black that you get here with the company's might blueprint so we'll select that then for the optic, fittingly, we'll go with the Russian VLK 3x optic. So this is one of the rare instances where this weapon actually fits in with the optic, or the optic fits in with the weapon it's being used on, a Russian weapon with a Russian optic. So we have the VLK 3.0 site. This is a 3x magnification site, Russian site. The pros here, again, just zoom level, and since we are adding an optic to the weapon, it's going to slow down our ADS speed a little bit here as well, since it is a little bit of a heavier optic on the weapon. So you can see here, again, just the base. Versus the company's might. We just have the same thing here, minus the right on the left hand side, and it's a darker variation of the optics. So we'll select that. Stock, we're going to leave the base. We're going to skip out on all the other attachments and utilize our fifth attachment here with the commando foregrip. This is going to assist with the recoil stabilization and the aiming stability, the cons here being the movement speed for the weapon. So go ahead and select that. And again, you can see the differences here versus the two, just a darker version with the company's might. And that's kind of the theme with this one. You can see overall how it looks here with attachments. We have that candid 30 round magazine there, the 545 by 39 on this weapon for the AN-94. I'll link the videos for the weapon conversions for the AN-94 Abacom below if you're interested in learning more about this weapon. I go into much more detail about the inner workings of this weapon and just some information about it there. But first off, you can see major differences with this. If I just go ahead and we'll preview it. You can see you have the Shadow Company logos on the stock as well as the rear of the dust cover. You also have the, the Shadow Company decals present on the left and the right hand side of the weapon body there. So you really the only thing you see the additional additions to the decals there on the left hand side and I believe they're on, present on the right hand side as well. You see the Shadow Company logo there as well. And we have a blue magazine to indicate the tracer rounds that come with this. So again this weapon itself actually does come with tracers. You can see they're indicated on the weapon. And if we go to just select that and we'll view the actual blueprint itself, it does have shadow tracer around. So it's those white tracers that you get with the weapon. White and black tracers, really. And that's indicated again by that bluish and black mixed magazine. So first off, how does it differ from the base AN-94? If I just select the AN-94 itself with the same attachments on it, you can see some minor differences here versus we have the, on the base AN-94, as I mentioned, we have the tan PEC-15 Tack laser on the right hand side of the weapon there on that Picatinny. We also have the transparent 545 by 39 canted magazine there versus the blue and black one that we have on the blueprint. And we also don't have those decals for Shadow Company present anywhere on the weapon. We do have some other indications for Russian factories, etc., where this weapon was made. Then we also have our select fire there. You can see above the pistol grip as well, which we also have on the Shadow Company variant of this for Companies Might. We just have different indicators that we don't have the red for the safety full auto or burst mode there to indicate what mode it is on but those are really the only major differences so if i go ahead and back out you'll see here we'll start the company's might and i'll just go down to the base a94 with the same attachments here so you can see one of the major differences with this is really the shadow company 
blueprint for the company's might is just a darker variation of the weapon. So overall, it's darker, has darker attachments. It has the, the minor deta decals on the weapon for Shadow Company indications. And then it also has the blue and black magazine to indicate the Shadow Tracers. That's really it with this weapon. So a little bit disappointing with this blueprint. Not much here going on. And also, I think the actual attachments being used in this probably are not really my favorite. You'll see when we jump into the gameplay here how it how it really handles. But first off, for camouflage, just in case you're curious, that does look pretty cool. So this is actually a good part of this weapon is just the way the camouflage looks on the weapon. So if we were to go to select something like a Spetsnaz Red, like that looks actually really, really awesome. And that may be the one perk of using this weapon is you get really awesome looking camouflages on this weapon which i really like so keep that in mind if you're curious about this one i think a lot of these you can mix and match and make some really nice looking camouflage blueprints here depending on what you're feeling like put it on here a lot of these look very nice you have a spetsnaz jungle some other spetsnaz type camouflages on this weapon just look really nice so we'll go ahead now and we'll just back out i'm gonna really quick before we jump into the gameplay i'm just gonna go to out of my custom game here and we'll go to just the actual weapon that I use for the attachments with my AN-94. And this is typically what I use in Warzone. So you, again, I'll list these videos down below if you're curious. I find this build specifically in Warzone, just mainly a Merc foregrip or even a Ranger foregrip will help you control that recoil up more. Other attachments are really up to you, but this is my Warzone build here. And I'll link those videos down below, but you can just see the differences. I, I specifically notice the difference when playing this, even in a custom lobby here, just against bots, the, uh, difference in the weapon performance utilizing some of these attachments i am not a big fan of the commando foregrip on this weapon for some reason i just feel like it is a little bit harder to get on target but again that's personal preference here for me so if you jump into the gameplay i'll just show you this in the background just playing against bots here on euphrates bridge trying to get a nice ranged engagements to fit how the blueprint's actually built uh, we have the longest barrel on this with a three times optic so we really want to utilize this the best we can for medium to long 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 medium to long range engagements ideally uh, with this weapon. I'll flick between the two round hyper burst and the full auto rounds, which I'll be tap firing here and there and also go full auto. So that is a benefit of this is that they do have the two round hyper burst. So those first two rounds will leave the barrel very, very fast due to the way this weapon's built. And again, I'll link that video down below for the conversion video on the AN-94 where I go in in depth, very vivid detail about how this weapon works in real life, if you're curious about that. But you do get those first two rounds that leave the barrel very fast with only the recoil of one shot, so they should be 100% accurate and really have very small variation as to where they both hit. So they should hit right on target no matter what. Um, and then you can full auto from there. The rate of fire will drop from 900 with the first two rounds to around 600 or 550 with the preceding rounds. So just keep that in mind. It, is, it does come in clutch when you do get into a pinch, you need to go full auto. Those first two rounds will definitely finish off an opponent, so it's definitely good to burst between shots and if you need to go full auto and in some instances definitely do it but you can get those two rounds out of the barrel faster i also recommend just tap firing in the full auto try and get three round bursts on this thing because that third round will also leave the barrel at a high rate of fire also so just keep that in mind let me know down below what you guys think of this blueprint i think overall this is kind of a disappointing aesthetic or cosmetically changed blueprint for me there's not really anything new going on here the n94 in the game for the base version is already black and uh, I prefer the base magazine as well for the 30 round transparent magazine where you can actually see it's a dynamic magazine. You can see the 5.5 by 39 millimeter rounds in the magazine. And even as you shoot, they'll reduce in the magazine to eventually be empty, which is a nice feature. So on the blue one, it's very hard to see. They're there, you can see them, but it's not as transparent as it would be on the base magazine. Overall, I think it's kind of... Uh, Kind of disappointed i would have preferred honestly a a reskin of the weapon itself but again i think it is pretty neat with the camouflage on there let me know down below what you guys think i also believe that the attachments on this probably aren't the best not really the best way that i would personally use this weapon um you'll see me struggling with a little bit here to get multiple kills on a row it's definitely just a weird weapon to use in this configuration at least how my play style is so that's really comes down to personal preference but let me know what you guys think of the AN-94 Avacon or the Avamot Nikonov 1994 model. Is it one of your favorite guns in Modern Warfare? Where do you think this fits in the meta for multiplayer and in Warzone? Because initially when I did my Warzone videos on this, I thought this was one of the best weapons. And I thought it was overall probably one of my favorite weapons. 
I haven't really used it in a while, and I need to, I need to get back to using it a little bit more and test it out again. It does it definitely has a weird spot in the meta now that we've had some Bruin nerfs, and the Kilo seems to be the, the number one weapon in the game now. I think it is a little bit hard to use um, in medium ranges. You really want to utilize this for longer range engagements in my mind or when you have position on the enemy, just because specifically in Warzone with the Kilo and some of those other high rate of fire weapons that are full auto, especially when you're engaging in the flinch you get, it's gonna be difficult to keep shots on target if you're getting shot in turn. So you really just need to use this weapon a very specific way, which I go over how I prefer to use it in the Warzone videos. Let me know what you guys think of this weapon. What's your favorite attachments on this in multiplayer? How do you like to use it in Warzone or do you not use it in either? Uh, do you think this is one of the top tier weapons of the game or maybe one of the mid tier or lower tier weapons of the game? I really don't see anybody using this at all when I jump into multiplayer or in Warzone anymore. So typically I think when new weapons come out, everyone will use them and then go right back to the meta. So I honestly have not run into any AN-94s uh, probably since the week or two weeks after it was released initially in the beginning of Season 5. So. Let me know down below what you guys think of this. I'm going to leave you guys just with some initial gameplay here. Let me know what you think of the blueprint overall, these attachments. Like I said, these are not my favorite attachments, but also we do have Season 6, which should be launching here at the very end of September. I believe we're about 12 days away. I want to say it launched on the 29th of September, so we will be getting new weapons. We'll be getting the AS Val, which is going to be the number one weapon I'm looking forward to in this game by far. Um, I did cover that in a video here on the channel as to what you can expect with that, utilizing some gameplay from... Uh, Battlefield 4, Sandstorm, Insurgency, as well as also Escape from Tarkov. So let me know down below what you guys think of that weapon. We also have the Remington 700 as well as the AA-12, which is going to be coming here in Season 6. So just a matter of which weapons are going to be Battle Pass weapons and which is going to be the, the mid-season weapon. And I'm hoping the AA-12 is mid-season. I don't think anybody else really wants another shotgun, especially with the Warzone meta right now just being all shotguns right now we have dragon dragon breath for the for the two pump shotgun as well as for the other semi-automatic shotgun i forgot the names off the top of my head but those two are really dominant right now in warzone we just had the dragon's best breath released for that shotgun as well so it'd be uh good to get an as val and the r700 in the battle pass and then put the aa12 mid-season because i don't think anybody really wants another shotgun at this point in the game's life cycle so I have to wait and see what that order is. I'm expecting a teaser probably sometime next week regarding what the lineup is going to be for the weapons for Season 6, um, hopefully. And uh, it should be launched, I believe, like I said, either the 29th or the 30th. So we're about two weeks, a little under away from Season 6 launch, and we'll get our hands on those weapons. So I'll leave you guys with that. And we also have the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Alpha, which will start tomorrow. So we'll probably cover that on tomorrow's live stream as well. And also be sure to like the channel and subscribe if you are enjoying the content and stay tuned for more. We'll be covering this game well into the future as well as some Cold War as well when that comes out. And uh, down the road I think we're going to get a lot of nice next gen console tactical shooters as well as we'll be covering some PC gameplay as well. So really excited to see what's going to be coming out for next gen consoles. Uh, hopefully Sandstorm will get moved to next gen as well as well I know Rainbow Six Siege is going to be ported into next gen as well. So that'll be fun. A lot of nice tactical shooters seem to be coming to next gen as well as what we have on pc so a lot of continued coverage coming forward really excited about that let me know down below what you guys think and i'll leave you guys with that until next time this is buffering gaming with the company's might an 94 blueprint for tier 100 of the season 5 battle pass till next time buffering gaming out